when you understand that you've been doing your neighbor wrong, you've been engaging in some conversations that you know you ought not be engaged in. You've been looking at folk with a bad thought in your mind. You've been going about and whispering under your breath, mumbling and grumbling against things that's holy. And you find yourself in a place wherein it seems like nobody wants to have anything to do with you. And you're on your knees now. Lord, what have I done? Lord, why they don't like me? Lord, why they don't call no more? It might just be that they've entrusted you with something and you violated that trust by passing it off. Am I on the phone tonight? David realized that it was him. He wasn't shifting the blame. He wasn't pointing his finger at no one else. David said, God, I need you to do something for me. He said, now, I know you was there in the valley with Goliath. I know you was there when the bear and the lion creeped in. You was there at Ziglag when they took our families and burned up our city. You was there to give us comfort and to give us strength. But now, Lord, I have sinned and against thee only have I done this evil. Watch David in the text. David says now uh, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. In other words, David is saying to God, I know you already know. He says, but it's my responsibility to come to you and to acknowledge my sins. See, every now and then, brothers and sisters, we try to sweep them under the rug. We try to shift the blame on somebody else. If sister so-and-so hadn't have done such a thing, then I wouldn't have reacted the way, say it, preacher, the way that I did. Do I have a witness here? But I come to tell you, you are not responsible for sister so-and-so, but you are responsible for whatever actions you take in life. Do I have a witness here? So every now and then we need to go to the Lord and tell the Lord, I acknowledge my transgressions, my sins are ever before me. Do I have a witness here? Look at verse five, if you will, real quick, and I'm gonna hasten to get you out of here. He says, behold, yeah, I was shapen in iniquity. Iniquity is sins that people before has committed. Sins that has been passed down through time. Some call it generational sins. And, and, and because daddy did it, son want to do it. Do I have a witness here? And daddy tells son, well, boy, that's how my daddy did it. And his daddy tell him, that's how my daddy did it. Well, somewhere along the line, somebody got to break that generational curse. Somebody got to stand up and say, for God, I live. And for God, do I have a witness here? Or oh, help me preach this if you will. But watch this in verse six. He says, behold, Thou desirest truth in the inward parts. David says, I know you know my heart. You know the thoughts that lingers in my mind. 
you know mine intentions as a matter of fact you know them before they ever reach me but because God made us with free will you have some thoughts and some intentions that are not always good and you wonder why God don't step in and cut them off God has to allow our thoughts and attentions to reach us to see what decisions we will make. Because the decisions that we make will either glorify them or they will condemn us. Do I have a witness here? And I come to tell you when you make the right choice, you can come in on Wednesday evening riding in your car and God will stir you up coming down Fifth Avenue trying to get the friendship to tell somebody that Jesus he still lives do I have a witness here it ought to be the testimony of the church tonight to tell somebody he walks with me he talks with me he tells me that I am his own Am I in the house tonight? But I'm glad that every now and then we have to cry out unto the Lord. Say, now, Lord, I need you to create in me a clean heart. Well, what is a clean heart? A clean heart is a heart that emulates God, loving your neighbor as yourself giving those bread that give you stones do I have a witness here praying for those who despitefully misuse you do I have a witness here I'm glad if you ask God he will come with you do I have a witness here but can I back up for just a minute I need to drop this nugget in your lap. There's a packed verse right here. He said, purge me with hyssop. That's a good thing right there. David remembers when they was in Egypt in slavery. God told them to go get some hyssop branches. Put the blood of the lamb ha, on the branches ha, take the branches ha, and mark your doorposts ha, and when the death angel ha, flies over ha, he'll pass by ha, your house ha, ain't he alright yes ha, every now and then ha, you need to tell the Lord ha, purge me ha, with your hyssop ha, and you do know what his hyssop is ha. it is ha, the blood of Jesus ha. purge me ha, and wash me ha, renew me ha, so I can feel your spirit ha. renew me ha, so I can praise your name ha. renew me ha, so I can worship you ha, in spirit and in truth ha. renew me ha, so that I can know ha, that your joy ha, is my strength. Ha. Is there anybody here ha, tonight that need the Lord ha, to purge you? Ha, and when he purges you, ha, he can create in you ha, a clean heart. Ha. He can renew in you ha, a right spirit. Ha. Do I have a witness here? Ha. I'm glad. Ha. Can't nobody ha, do me like Jesus. Ha. Can't nobody ha, do me like the Lord. Ha. He walks with me. Ha. He talks with me. Ha. He tells me. Ha. Do he talk to you? Ha. I'm glad. Ha. I heard a story one time. Ha. There was an old preacher. His member called him. Ha. He started out to go see about her 
and on when he went out the door, put his key in the car. The car wouldn't crank, but he was dedicated, committed to seeing about God's children. He started walking to his member's house, and along the way, he took a dog path. Do I have a witness here? On that path, he met a young man. The young man said, Mr., do you have a light? He gave the young man a light and went on his way. But the next morning, when he got the morning's paper, he was sitting there reading. The young man that he saw on the path was in the paper. He had committed murder. The preacher got stirred in his soul. So he put on his clothes, went down to the shaft apartment. And when he got there, he pleaded to the sheriff. He said, there's a man in your jail. I met him last night. I got a very important question to ask this young man. So the sheriff permitted him to see the young man. He said, young man, I got just one question. When I met you, on that dog path last night he said why didn't you take my life he said a young lady that you killed she was very young had all of her life ahead of her i'm an old man i've seen many things i've done many things why didn't you take my life the boy told the man it was my very intention when I asked you for a light to rob you and to kill you. But when you struck that match, I saw another man. His hair looked like lamb wool. His eyes like balls of fire. His feet like burnt brass. Ain't he all right? If you know he's all right, say yeah. 